Kept you waiting, huh? Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Okami. Uh, as you know from that post that I put up the other day, uh, October and November were both just whirlwinds. But I'm glad to settle back into Okami as we come up on the end of the game. And just before we get there, there's the matter of the two demons, the two incredibly dope steampunk owls with the time manipulation gimmick, Lechku and Nechku. I think we want to wait. This might be a little too early. Let's see. No, it's pretty generous. It'll correct for you to an extent. As long as you're within, like, probably I would say 20 to 30 degrees of it, which, again, that's really generous. And now we can use all this diamond dust to get us across the bridge. You can see there's one more cannon, though, uh, which we're going to have to deal with on the way across. The rest, though, having the other four out of the way makes this much less chaotic. So, Oki is hanging back to keep an eye on the injured Shiranui. So the next time we run into those two owls, it's going to be a much more interesting fight. In fact, it's going to be a hoot. Before, it was Oki versus Nechku and Ami versus Shiranui versus uh, Ami and Shiranui versus Lechku. It was a real free for Owl. We were just fighting Lechku, and Owl of the sudden, here comes Oki with a parallel battle. Oh, where is the. Ah, uh, uh, there it is. We now have the floral finish for the Great Tengu, which did not connect with him. Lovely. Robbing me of four fangs, I see. Thank you very much, Okami. Ah, oh, well. So now we're going to melt the ice and get a nice, lustrous orb to ponder. Let me know in the comments what you're pondering uh, with this orb. Or are you pondering the orb itself? It's magnificent, hypnotic, geometric form. It's crystalline beauty. Oh, now you've got me pondering the orb. The other thing that I'm pondering is that I have to roll the fucking orb again. I think this is the last time we have to do it in the game, though. This is the last orb push. This is the last one right here. Nope, 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 nope. That was a lie. This one will be the last. The last time we will ever have to move an orb. Um, we, of course, wanted to move the orb because the orb provides us ice. Oh, God. Yep. Yep. I... Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to need two Veil of Mist. That was actually pretty clutch. <laughs> I couldn't think of any more owl puns, so I guess I'm owl out. Oh, no. Hold on. There it is. That almost got kind of spooky. Probably going to need to Veil of Mist again. That's no problem. I guess once they're frozen, they become sources of ice. So does that mean you can use one to freeze another? I guess we'll never know. We're just going to refill our health real quick. Have a chat with the newest imp merchant. And the Imp Merchant is going to fight us in the arena of the free market. 
But when somebody challenges us to a <laughs> to a debate in the free marketplace of ideas, and they're an imp, we can safely reject them because they have nothing to tell us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was the wolf's companion you were talking about, right? Yeah, the wolf's companion. The wolf really seemed to perk up when that ponkle appeared. It looked like the wolf had recovered somewhat. I sensed they had a bond, a bond that made me feel they'd be okay. So I left them and came rushing here. So we're going to have Oki on our side for this battle after all. Oki is no Shiranui but he'll be of some assistance to us. He'll actually be pretty crucial. Fight together with Oki? Yeah, let's rumble! And the music for this upcoming fight. Ah! We start with this, of course. But this is one of my favorite boss themes. Right into it. So this is where those bird brains went. It's too bad we're not going to get a flock off feather face. They're trying to hide and lick their wounds. We can't let these infernal contraptions get away this time. And I don't think we have enough energy to chase them down again. Yeah, we're not going to be chasing them down again. So again, the, the Ainu are a northern Japanese indigenous group, and their mythology is heavily present in this portion of the game. Um, I found an old article because I wanted to learn more about Nechku and Lechku specifically, since I couldn't quite figure out what their origin is in mythology. And what I finally found out was the Ainu god of the land was an owl known as Chikap Kamui whose tears were said to fall in gold and silver, uh, also known as Kotan Kor Kamui. Then I found out Lechku and Nechku are just their localized names. In Japanese, they are uh, Moshir Echiku and Kotan Echiku, the root words there being Moshir and Kotan, like Kotan Kor Kamui. Uh, respectively, they are country and village. They're worshipped as guardian deities, but Okami's been playing with this idea now of malevolent forces uh, masquerading. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Put that thought on hold. Pull me back like an arrow and fire me at those demons. Once we have reflected enough of their attacks, we can do this to stun them so we can finally start laying the damage in. Let's go. Yeah, so we should be able to two-cycle each owl. Nice. Uh, let's see. We've seen all their attacks, right? We've seen the bomb. Ah, if we haven't before, now we have. No, wait, I think this is the first one, right? Oh, whoops, I didn't notice the, uh, the frost daggers. They will attack you simultaneously. You really do have to keep an eye on both of them. You can flick the stick to kind of Z-target between them uh, if they're both near enough each other. But every now and then, they will. one of them will wander away. Uh, so you kind of do have to manage the camera a little bit. Let's see, this is the hive from the Spider Queen fight. This will just give us health back. It won't contribute to getting a stun off. And we know what to do with this. Just zap it. It's a lightning rod. Oh, and here Oki comes. That's so cool! Oh my god, this fight owns! Oh wait, why isn't this going off? There we go. And... Oh no, I didn't charge up the last hit. Otherwise it would have taken him over the damage threshold. This is, this is supposed to be a three-phase fight, I think. For everything except the glaives. <laughs> 
That's fine. All it's going to take to finish him is a power slash. You get most of those. Ah, this is a really fun fight. Wow, where was I actually going with that thought before? I kn I was saying something about, like, the, the way that the game is starting to use... Or, like, it, not starting to use, but starting to get more audacious with this... With this concept of, like, the corrupted imagery of the gods. Or these demons using that imagery as a form of mockery or ridicule for the for for the divine. Like desecrating the their image. And that's sort of what Lechku and Nechku represent in regards to their mythological origin. Uh, I'll try to remember to link the article so people uh, can look through it. It's a multi-part one? Uh, it's, a, it's in a series about Okami's... Oh, hell yeah. Okami's mythology. Um, I think I've, I've probably referred to another part of it in an earlier episode. Uh, there's also another pun with their names. Oh, shit. The twin demons which had suddenly awoken atop Izafuji and tried to lay waste to the land of Kamui were defeated. Um, I think depending on how you combine them, their names are either, they either translate to like one counts time, one brings death, or gears of the moon, which is a little tidbit from the beautiful Okami art book. However, a giant cloud, black as night, casts a shadow on the land. Light, nine tails, the twin demons, Lechku and Nechku. The souls of each were swept into the clouds as it moved. It drifted towards the Ark of Yamato at the bottom of Lake Lauchi. The Ark of Yamato is beckoning all the world's darkness within. Tuskel's words echoed ominously, awakening Amaterasu's heart. Remember, Tuskel had the, uh, the headpiece with the gold and silver owls. All the sacrifices, all the life lost in the name of good. Was it all in vain? Shirinui, Amaterasu's hundred-year-old incarnation, was fatigued and exhausted by the intense battle. Holy shit. That's a lot of blood. However, when Shirinui, Shirinui noticed the glow of Oki's sword Kotone, a sly smile seemed to crease the wolf's tired lips. Satisfied with this bright glimmer of hope, Shirinui struggled to rise and put every last ounce of strength into passing through the uh, Ishaku's gate back in time, back home. As Amaterasu and Isun looked on, they were fully aware that Shiranui headed back into the face of danger, to the battle with Orochi. After saving Nagi from the clutches of death and aiding them in their own quest, Shiranui would die a hero, marking the beginning of the legend of Orochi. As Ishaku left the scene, his eyes betrayed the sword of toughness one exhibits when preparing for a grave event. One whole sun fragment? Awesome! I'm gonna buy a pack of gum with that. Yeah, we will definitely be saving after that. <laughs> and we've got a little bit more cutscene to go before we proceed on with the finale of Okami. Amaterasu and the others returned to the foot of Izofuji. There, they saw Lika praying intently. The storm had subsided. Then, as if to celebrate their hard-won victory, the twin volcanoes of Izafuji erupted in great pillars of flame. The villagers felt the warmth on their skin and wept tears of joy. However, Oki merely surveyed the scene stoically, remaining silent. Although the evil demons had been driven away, the thought of having taken the sword and caused so much grief weighed heavily on his heart. 
The only one who could ease the burden of his woes was Samical. The chieftain who had rescued Kimu from the shrine stepped forward. Silently, he approached Oki, offering an outstretched hand. They're both just Jojo posing at each other as they shake hands. I love it. His eyes were very emotional. Uh, Oki, realizing the gravity of the scene, extended his arm. The moment they shook hands, Wepkir was reborn into a village far too strong to ever fall victim to evil again. As for Katone, the sword that vanquished the twin demons, it was returned to its pedestal by Oki's own hands, and as long as the glow remained, no evil dared near. Kutone's gleam spoke of a power too great to succumb to evil. At that moment, a brilliant flash of light shot forth from Kutone, striking squarely on the frozen surface of Lauchi Lake. Though the lake had never shown any sign of melting, cracks began to open up along its surface. The legend of the Iron Ark, Yamato, said to have fallen from heaven, and the holy Lauchi Lake, which it called home, was revealed to be more than a mere legend before all those present. So, the end game will take place within the Ark of Yamato. And before we get there, there are a couple of uh, there are a couple of folks who I would like to cross the Rainbow Bridge onto the Ark and board first. Those are my ten dollar and up patrons for the month of November: Cindra Lind Ackerblom, uh, Victor T, Moody, Sad Salad Dressing. Evan, Kyle, Absinthe Miasma, Brenton Buchanan, Chris Makesner Croft, uh, Cleric Beastie. I just noticed this. You could even see the owl here, uh, here on the statue. Uh, where was I? Cleric Beastie, I think I just said? Yeah, uh, Ditlutz, Glenn Mullen, Jean, Maddie Hansen, Not a Tick with Wi Fi, Sibella Fionlag, Wolfman 500. Sam, and last but not least, a fellow David, David Enever. Thank you all so much for your support, and thank you all for watching. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all the other things in the typical YouTube call to action. You know the ones. Do the engagement. Go forth and engage. Uh, thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.